What's going wrong with our NHS, our beloved NHS that we've been clapping for every Thursday because they've been working so hard over, over these last few years of pandemic. And if you want to know about why our services have been running slow, why more and more services need to be paid for, um, our Dr. Bob Gill has created um, this film called The Great NHS Heist. And he's about to tell you all about, he went on this long um, investigation to figure out exactly what's going on. And what he's uncovered has been so extensive and so insidious, he's made a whole film about it and he's now here to talk to us. So again, if you ever use the NHS, will need to use the NHS, you or your loved ones, and that's certainly me and my loved ones, this is the talk that you want to come to. Dr. Bob Gill, thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction. A bit about myself. I'm a GP. I'm a, I'm a GP and a NHS campaigner. Um, what I want to do is outline what's happened to the NHS and where we're heading. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot, lot in common with uh, what government is doing about the climate change and what they're doing to healthcare. There's a lot of spin, there's a lot of gaslighting. But the reality is, I need what's to turn the volume up on the speakers. Could you just keep yeah. filming yeah. for me? Okay. Conspiracy against the NHS. To change it from a public service into a corporate dominated system resembling that of America dominated by private insurance companies and private providers and the NHS reduced to a public funding stream and a logo and nothing else. So this has taken quite a few steps in terms of legislation, the creation of a, a market, the introduction of a bloated bureaucracy the saddling of the NHS with toxic private finance initiative debt, which not only was used as an excuse for shrinking the NHS capacity, but also cut the number of beds and served as a financial narrative to justify cuts and closures in services. Now, most of you might not be aware that there's a bill that's passed through Parliament recently coming into law in July which completes the legislative series of changes which fundamentally hands over NHS budgets to private insurance companies. Now of course you've heard nothing of this on the news, on the BBC. There's been a total radio silence. Instead we're distracted by celebrity gossip celebrity court cases, what the royal family are up to, but nobody's told you you have practically lost the most treasured, the most civilizing institution in the country, your NHS. So what will the bill do? This bill hands over budgets to private companies. It breaks the NHS up into 42 new legal entities. It destroys national pay terms and conditions for staff. There will be a race to the bottom in terms of standards, deregulation, so you don't need to see qualified health professionals for health care. There will be an ongoing cut and postcode lottery in terms of the services available to you and your family. And ultimately, the rationing will increase to drive a private market in healthcare. So what the NHS will be reduced to is skid row services and a reduced menu of services. So what the, what the NHS no longer provides, you will have to pay for out of pocket. Now either you duck into life savings, you sell off your house, or you take out private insurance. Now you might feel secure that you know, even if you have private insurance, that's a good idea, but the reality is the business model for private insurance is to pay out when it's nice and cheap and simple, but look for an excuse 
not to pay out when you become expensive and complicated. The business model is to make profit through the denial of care. And that's what people need to take hold of and grasp, is that money is to be generated by allowing sick people to die. Then there's no clearer way of putting it. So the NHS that we celebrate publicly and everybody declares undying devotion to has been fundamentally repurposed into a corporate cash cow which will be partly funded through taxation so you will still pay through taxation to get NHS services but you will have to pay top up charges to replace what the NHS used to provide so it will no longer be a comprehensive universal service now we can see this happening already so if you live somewhere where you've had your A&E closed well what happens to you when you're seriously sick you have to endure longer travel times to get to an A&E hospital which provides that care now for every minute you spend traveling and you're seriously ill that increases your chances of dying you do not survive or if you do survive you have a more complex recovery and in, perversely in the end you end up costing more so the services that are being designed are there to deliver cheap profitable care such as cataract replacement joint replacement you may not know this but more than half the elective hip replacements done and paid for by the taxpayer are now provided by private health care so they take a slice of the funding to pay shareholders and executives. Similarly, most of the mental health beds in this country are no longer provided by the NHS, they're provided by healthcare providers, private healthcare providers. And a lot of these are American multinationals who know exactly how to make profit through the denial of care. So let's bring this closer to home. Now you may have experienced difficulty with your GP surgeries and accessing services. Well how has that come about? There's been a decade long defunding of primary care. GP funding has been squeezed. In fact in terms of inflation it has shrunk. We are thousands of doctors short than the population needs. And then the pandemic came along and rather than boosting funding to primary care and the hospitals, the government more or less shut down primary care, handed it over to the 111 service, which is another outsourced privatised service, and threw money, billions and billions, at private corporations that did a very poor job. In fact, the 27 billion, 27 billion spent on test and trace, which went to an accountancy firm, Deloitte, and an outsourcing giant Serco, the parliamentary committee that looked into how that was spent decided that it made no difference in the need for a lockdown. So this was 27 billion spaffed up the wall, to quote Boris Johnson's own phrase. So there's plenty of money around to be spent on healthcare, but it's going in the wrong place. Now some people call for a what sounds like a reasonable solution, we need more money. But the picture I've outlined to you already is that the NHS is infested with corporate parasites. Now if you chuck more money at these corporations, not much of it is going to filter down into patient care. Yes mate, completely agree. Completely agree. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Also modern medicine is it's got things the wrong way around. We are not spending enough attention on prevention of disease. We are not looking after what we feed our children. We are not treating each other with respect, decent terms and conditions and wages. Why should we be any why should we be surprised that there's an epidemic of mental health disease? Or there's an epidemic of poor diet related obesity and chronic disease. So we are spending a lot of our energy and a lot of our time downstream when we should be looking upstream. So just to conclude, what, what people need to realize is there's a vast, there's a massive awareness gap. The population are being kept in the dark because there's no media coverage. 
we more or less have a censorship on any discussion about privatisation and the solutions to the problems that we've been told about, the long waiting list, the crowd at A&Es, the people dying in ambulances, the solutions are always to put more money in the hands of private providers who have actually caused the problem. It's very perverse. And what I would like people to do is they want to get involved and learn more about what's going on. There are some useful resources. You can watch my film for a start. It's free on YouTube. There's a lot more detail in that. It paints a complete picture of what's happened. Spread the word. If you're on social media, share the links. There's a couple of other websites that might be quite useful. There's an organization called Your NHS Needs You that produces quite a good lot of information and material. There's another group called Every Doctor, which again is very hot on uh, cascading the messages about private medicine and privatization. So it matters to all of you here. You never know when you're going to need health care. You never went, know when you, your family are going to need health care. And the absolute last thing we should be doing is copying the American system, which is twice as expensive, which delivers worse outcomes. And even if you have insurance, many insured people are left bankrupt by medical bills, which are controlled by a dystopian, profit-greedy American corporate cabal, which is not interested in health, but is interested in profit. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks so much, that was Dr. Bob Gill. If anyone knows, um, if anyone has any questions, this is, this is the, the doctor to ask. Um, yeah, it's really, really disappointing to hear that across the board, our governments and the people in power are just dropping the ball, aren't they? When it comes to climate change, when it comes to healthcare, it's always the same old mantra, profit over people, time after time. And once again, it's fallen to us to try and make a difference, to try and make this change, isn't it? So check out his film, it's free on YouTube, The Great NHS Heist. Um, we have a campaign tent just that way. You won't miss it. You know, there's a table out front, we've got XR art blockers, we've got, um, yeah, where you can get prints on your accessories, your bags, your clothes. Um, and also a lot of flyers and a lot of campaigners, all from different groups, talking about equally important, valid causes. We'll be back at five o'clock for our last speaker of the day, Aaron. Thanks so much. <laughs>